Hey, hello everyone. My name is Jiang Ming. I come from Penn State University, College of Information Science and Technology, Software System Security Lab. The topic I will present is the tent pipe, pipeline the symbolic tent analysis. This talk is about a new approach to spinning up dynamic tent analysis, which is the pipeline the hybrid dynamic and static tent analysis on multi-core platforms. Tent analysis is a kind of data flow analysis which labels the selected user input as a tent set and propagates them along program execution paths according to the specific tent propagation policy and then check the tent status at a critical location which are tent sinks. Tent analysis has many compelling applications in security. Mm. This example shows um, uh, out of loop bound uh, one bit in libdf, which uh, uh, graph or uh, uh, libraries, the malicious user input can control the value of the loop bound, leading to access violation. To detect this software uh, one bit, we can label the untrusted user input as tainted, and uh, propagate this tainted along program execution. And before the program execution enter into uh, the loop, loop body, we can check the, um, the tin value of the clear, which, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is the loop bound. And then we can find a tin policy violation because the clear is tinted. So tin analysis can be divided into static and dynamic tin analysis. Both of them have their own points and cons. Static tin analysis it performed prior to execution, and therefore it has no impact on runtime overhead. But the, the limitation is the precision loss when merging multiple parts. Dynamic tent analysis propagates tent attacks along program execution, which is more accurate than static approach since it only considers the real, um, real paths taken at the runtime. However, the limitation is a high performance penalty. Static tent analysis works through control flow graph to determine tint. However, it may lead to either under tinting or over tinting problems when merging multiple paths result at a control flow confluence point. In this example, um, the output Z is either tinted or, or concrete value according to a different path. However, without, uh, without knowing the um, concrete dynamic path information, static tent analysis may lead to precision loss. On the other side, when performing dynamic tent analysis, the original program or instructions mix, uh, mix with the tent tracking code. Um, after the be beginning the program execution, we have to uh, stop the program execution and do the context switch in order to propagate the tenant text. It usually takes six to eight actual instructions to propagate one tenant tag in shadow memory. In this example, the shadow memory is designed uh, with a page table-like structure. The first five instructions are used to calculate the tenant tag address, and the following three instructions are used to load the uh, Turn the text from the shadow memory. After the propagation of the turn on text, we have to re resume the program execution. Uh, following this step, we finish dynamic tent analysis. When dynamic tent analysis is performed on the same core, the, pro the program execution code and the turn the uh, tracking logic code have to compete for the CPU cycles registers and uh, uh, cache space, which lead to the significant uh, um, slow, uh, performance slowdown. Mm. Okay. Mm. The high performance penalty of dynamic tent analysis comes from the strict coupling of the program execution code and tent logic code. 
Our work is a hybrid of static and dynamic training analysis. We remove these two approaches limitation and combine their advantages. Our approach has small impact on runtime overhead and also is accurate on single pass. Our key idea is pipeline symbolic tent analysis. Our purpose is to decouple tent tracking logic code to multiple spell cores. TinPub has two concurrently running parts. The first one is the instrumented application thread doing a lightweight online logging and acting as the source of the pipeline. The second part is a multiple work thread uh, as a different pipeline stages uh, to perform symbolic tending analysis in parallel. Okay, when we start our online logging, when the tendencies are introduced to the application, the application thread produces the compact control flow profiles and pass the profiles to the multiple worker thread. Each worker thread construct a segment of three-line code and uh, um, perform tending analysis in parallel. Note that here we start the tending analysis on the second segment before the first stride uh, finish the tent analysis. The challenge here is that when, pro when propagating a tent tag in a segment, uh, may not know the incoming um, tent state. Um, our solution is to perform segmented uh, symbolic tent analysis. That is, uh, we calculate the tent state symbolically and uh, uh, summarize the effect of the tent propagation. When the con concrete tent state arrives, we update the symbolic tent state by replacing the related symbolic text with their correct values. We call this resolving symbolic tent state. And according to the segment order, tent pipes calculate the tent state for each segment and communicate with the next stride to update the tent state and also perform the tender checks at the same time. Compared with the conventional inland dynamic tender analysis, tender pipe has much lower application runtime overhead, and the tender logic code is decoupled to multiple um, pipeline stages running in parallel. The, the accumulated effect of tender pipe's pipeline structure lead to a substantial uh, speed up on tent analysis. This example shows, um, uh, this slide shows the example of symbolic tent analysis on a segment of three line code. The left side shows the code segment. Assume the tent state for this code segment is unknown. Here our input is size and number. Um, instead of waiting for the Explicit information. We treat this unknown input as a tenor symbols and summarize the um, effect of tenor pro propagation for this uh, color segment. The red uh, picture shows the result of symbolic tent analysis. Mm, when the uh, explicit tent state is available, we resolve the symbolic tent state by replacing the the symbols with their uh, real tent text or concrete values. In this example, the size, only the size is tinted and the, the input number is a concrete value. Mm. Okay, require that uh, tent pipe has two concurrently running parts. The first one is the uh, instrument application thread, which performs lightweight online logging. The log data includes control flow data. Um, here, the control flow data um, is the uh, uh, SQL uh, base block entry address. And we also log the initial concrete execution state when the tenant seed are first introduced. This initial concrete execution state is used to restrict the possible uh, symbolic variables and also used to calculate the memory address. We will discuss this issue later. Um, to further reduce the overhead of online logging, 
we adopt the compact profile format and NV buffering thread pool. We extend the detailed execution profile to deal with the implicit loop introduced by REP prefixed instruction. For the dynamic uh, implementation tool, this REP prefixed instruction um, will lead to a sequence of base block with only one single instruction. The design of the NV buffering thread pool um, satisfies that the application thread continues executing and fill in the free buffers and uh, the multiple worker, uh, multiple worker thread consumer the full buffers or synchronizedly. Since our tools is built on PIN um, platform, we fully utilize the PIN instrumentation optimization to uh, reduce online uh, logging overhead, such as we inline our analysis code and uh, utilize the fast buffering API. Um, given the control flow profile, um, we construct the three line code uh, by first uh, generating base block entry address and and extracting x eighteen six injunctions and uh, translating these injunctions to intermediate language. Since our control flow profile um, contains the base block entry address to solve the problem of memory access address, our major observation is with the initial concrete state and uh, three line code, most uh, address of memory operations can be uh, calculated or inferred. Um, for example, the first base block is ended with the indirect jump, jump EAX, and the following base block has several memory operations which are calculated through this EAX. Since we have the line code, we know the address of the second base block. In this way, the memory operations in the second base block can be determined. And uh, to, de uh, to solve the challenge of the symbolic memory index, that the memory uh, address uh, uh, location is dependent on the symbolic input, we rely on past condition and turn the state uh, to narrow down the symbolic memory index into a small range, uh, small scope. In this example, the, mm, the path condition for i is between 7 and 10. To propagate the um, uh, 10 attacks for this array access, we, we label all the values between this scope as tainted. Mm. Mm. When a data buffer becomes full, an inland function will be called to um, uh, to initialize a tending analysis engine to perform symbolic tending analysis concurrently with other worker thread. The core part of our tending analysis engine is an abstract tent analysis processor which is, uh, simulates a segment of tent operations and uh, updates the tender state accordingly. Similar to the pin code cache, we also maintain a tent base block cache to speed up tent analysis. And one major benefit of our symbolic tending analysis is supporting multi-tech and multi-color tending analysis. Each symbolic variable can naturally represent a tender tag. Um, tender pipe does not require a redesign of the structure of shadow memory and uh, also introduce negligible additional overhead. On the contrary, the dynamic multi-tag tending analysis has to sacrifice more shadow memory and introduce more, um, much more um, uh, additional runtime overhead. We perform our evaluation on the machine with 16 cores and uh, the profile buffer size is set to the 32 megabytes. We compile with the four pin tools. The first one is non-pin, which is used to evaluate the overhead of pin uh, runtime environment. And the second is the libdft, which is uh, which is a state of art conventional inline dynamic tending analysis. Tender pipe application represents the overhead uh, for the application and the examination. Tender pipe over uh, represents the end to end overhead introduced by our tender pipe. We compare these two pin tools on spec uh, 
2.36 benchmark. On average, tenant pipe speed up dynamic tenant analysis by 2.38 times, and uh, we also achieve much lower application runtime overhead. We achieved a similar result on the site of Linux uh, common utilities. And on average, tenant pipe speed up dynamic tenant analysis by 2.43 times. Mm. We also evaluate our tenant pipe on set of security applications. The first one we evaluate tenant pipe on, on 12 software exploit, which uh, covers a, a wide range of real software vulnerabilities. In all cases, tenant pipe successfully identified the tenant policy violation. At the same time, we count the total number of tenant bytes in the final tenant state. Compared with the other two inline dynamic tenant analysis tool, LibDIT and the TMU, tenant pipe achieves almost the same result. Um, tenant pipe introduces a, a small additional tenant bytes by, you know, in four cases. We attribute this to our approach to handling the symbol, symbolic memory index. We also evaluate tenant pipe um, in the memory analysis task. We generate uh, tenant graphs for the member. And since the um, tenant pipe's optimization does not rely on control flow graph, um, for, the, for this member samples, uh, most of them's control flow graph are obfuscated. And similar to the dynamic tenant analysis, uh, tenant pipe um, achieve a similar result, but with uh, very low runtime overhead. We also evaluate tenant pipe, um, tenant pipe's multi-tag tenant analysis functionality. Um, a common feature for the block cipher hash function and the stream cipher function is that one bit change in the input OK will uh, cause the uh, significant change in the output. So we utilize tenant pipe to detect this crypto function uh, in the binaries with multi-tag tenant uh, multi-tag tenant analysis. Tenant pipe handles the multi-tag propagation transparently. Um, compared to the single tag tenant analysis, tenant pipe only introduces less than 10% additional overhead, where Termio introduces 119% additional overhead. Okay, and currently tenant Pipes has limitations. Um, first, uh, due to our pipeline structure, tenant pipe may detect a, a violation of tenant policy after the, the real attack happens. And second is uh, our currently control floor profiles only record a base block entry address, which may not uh, uniquely identify malicious self, -modi self modifying code. And the third is the tenant analysis engine simulates the semantics of tenant operations, which is slow. Okay, let me summarize my talk. Our tenant pipe is for pipeline dynamic tenant analysis with segmented symbolic tenant analysis. Tenant pipe relies on three line code with very few runtime values enabling lightweight online logging and low runtime overhead. Okay, any question? Very uh, last talk. Uh, so, um, uh, this is Hai Bo Chen from Shanghai Jiu Tong University. So I have two questions. The first one is, uh, uh, does uh, tender pipes support multi-threaded applications? Mm. Mm, currently, we didn't uh, support a multi-thread um, application, but we, uh, our future plan is to extend the tenant pipe on the multi-thread application. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, so you uh, run uh, a multiple uh, analysis uh, engines in a pipeline fashion. So, how do you uh, synchronize the uh, um, the analysis thread with the, the main thread? Uh, 
because if you uh, do not synchronize it, maybe uh, the uh, execution already passed, uh, uh, maybe execution um, um, behind the uh, analysis so that there could be some security uh, issues. Mm. Um, do, do you have any, any comments on this? Oh, um, um, let me see. The application thread continue mm -hmm. um, execution and fill in the free buffers. And um, um, in this case, uh, this um, um, application thread do not need to synchronize with the analyzed thread. And uh, the, this multiple analysis thread will consume this four buffers and uh, do this turn analysis only when a, a turn policy is violated. And, um, um, the, the worker thread will notify the main thread that your uh, tenant policy is violated. But, but uh, since the application thread has already executed uh, uh. past the security uh, vulnerability, uh. so uh, because your, your work thread uh, analysis uh, is performed after the application execution, yeah. so this means that uh, yeah. uh, the security, has may, uh, security vulnerability has may have already been exploited. Uh, yeah. Um, um, yes, our uh, one limitation is uh, due to our pipeline uh, style. Um, tenant pipe may detect oh. a violation of tenant policy after the real attack mm -hmm. happens. But uh, there are other mm -hmm. applications um, that uh, I think we, our tenant pipe can fit in. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Hi, uh, my Hi. name is Ashay Rani from UT Austin. Um, I had a question about uh, the overhead. So if I understand correctly, the, one of the main components in determining how much overhead you would incur is the distance between these segments, right? Uh, how many instructions or how many <coughs> other memory references you could have in between these instructions. And I was wondering if you did some kind of a sensitivity study or some, some analysis of these benchmarks to find out how many such instructions exist between these two segments. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't uh, understand your oh, question. So, um, as I understand, the overhead mm. is dependent upon the distance between these multiple segments. Yes. Sir. Because the more number of segments you would have, the more offloaded executions you would have of your analysis, right? Uh, uh, correct. So um, I'm just curious if you performed any kind of a sensitivity study to find out how many such instructions actually occur in your benchmarks and uh, uh, how are they distributed? Do you have any ideas on uh, how how many such instructions actually occur in between these segments in practice? Uh, how many instructions? Okay, we could talk about it offline. Uh, uh, then. Uh, Thanks. Hello, George Portokali, this is Stephen Institute of, of Technology. Uh, very nice work. I, yeah. I particularly like it because I've done some similar work. Uh, we had the Sado replica paper in CCS 2013, so I see uh. there's quite a a lot of similarities. Uh. So I have some questions uh, regarding your uh, performance evaluation section. Yes. So uh, first in particular, so can you uh, uh, comment on how many threads did you actually use in parallel to get the performance benefit? Um, 16. 16? Yeah. So um, since I noticed that you do not compare with Shadow Replica, you um, compare yeah. with LibDFT, right? Yeah. So just looking at the papers, I saw that your, the performance benefits are basically the same or worse with mm -hmm. Tain Pipe. So do you have any idea why is that? Is that because you do like multiple tags or something mm. else? Okay, your question is uh, compared with the Shadow Replica. And um, yeah, I think we have different design goals. Um, shadow Replica rely on the fine-grained static offline analysis to remove the redundancy technological code and uh, initial uh, shadow thread to perform this uh, um, uh, tenant analysis in parallel. Um, our design goal is we, want, we don't want to rely on this static analysis, especially in many security analysis uh, scenarios. This fine-grained static analysis is unavailable. Now, for example, uh, the fact that no, turn the, uh, shadow replica rely on the control flow graph um, to um, cut down some, um, uh, to, to do some path profiling. Um, our approach uh, do not uh, and rely on this uh, static analysis. So, so uh, um, for the uh, for the um, uh, um, um, for the performance data, um, actually we uh, performed the same evaluation on the spike uh, 2006, 
And um, for the for the uh, uh, imp uh, performance improvement, uh, um, shadow repl replica do a good job than tender pipe. But we think tender pipe has many uh, more application in the security analysis. So mm. let let me respond mm. to that. So. Um, well, I think the analysis is pretty similar. Shadow mm -hmm. Replica also mm -hmm. has this dynamic feedback loop, mm -hmm. so information you collect dynamically, mm -hmm. you can statically analyze, so it's not the just-in-time mm -hmm. nature exactly, but it's kind of similar. But my question is basically just performance, because uh -huh. here you use 16 threads, essentially, okay. yeah. to get a performance benefit, which is not uh -huh. as good as um, previous work, uh -huh. and you use essentially uh -huh. 20, you know, 16 times mm -hmm. the processing yeah. power to do yeah. that. So that's a, I, I was curious if that's like a, a side effect of you using symbolic execution or, or something else. Uh, yes, um, um, the current limitation is the, uh, the speed, of, uh, speed uh, of the symbolic execution. Uh, it's quite slow, so we have to initiate the more uh, worker thread to speed up this tender analysis. Okay, so this kind of my final comment. So mm. is it worth it to actually you know, use symbolic execution in this sense since it's actually, it seems to be more expensive? Mm. Yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, 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 well, our, one, our future work is to um, generate this uh, tender analysis code and uh, run, run this code uh, and natively, so we can speed up the tender analysis. And thanks, uh, I think it's a good question. Right. It's also yeah. one of Thanks, we can talk further. Uh, thank you. Thank you.